Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your November 2022 general reading. We are looking at the first half of November from the 1st through the 15th, and this reading is for the air sign of Aquarius. Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for taking the time to be here, watch these videos, for all your love and support of my YouTube channel, likes, shares, hitting that subscribe button. Uh, those of you who reach out for personal readings, keeping me so busy with those, your donations, all your comments, all of it welcome, all of it appreciated, and I always like to say thank you, so thank you. Okay, Aquarius, this is for you for the first half of November 2022. If your sun, moon, rising, or Venus sign is in Aquarius, if you're cross-watching cross for an Aquarian, it is also relevant. If you know any or all of your signs, sun, moon, rising, and Venus, watch them all. Each one can bring in a little additional perspective, insight into your situation. And if you find that something really does hit home with you, it resonates, you'd like to maybe pull the curtain back a bit and take a deeper look. Um, please feel free to email me directly at maggie the number one mcguire at gmail.com if you're interested in uh, reaching out for a personal reading for yourself or as a gift for someone else you can also see that contact info by clicking on the description link with this video i would love to hear from you i can usually respond the same day with more information i do offer quite a wide variety of readings in all areas of life and uh, I do readings full-time, it's all that I do, so I'm pretty diligent about timely scheduling. So if that's something you're interested in, please email me. Okay, Aquarius. Let's see what the first half of November looks like for you. I am using the Tarot of Dreams and clarifying with the Radiant Rider Waite. All right, we begin with the Knight of Cups. Knights, of course, represent offers, opportunities for change, something coming in or being extended. This is the Knight of Cups, the Knight of Water, the Knight of Emotion. Now, since this, a, this is a general reading and they always resonate a little differently for everyone, the intensity can vary. It might be anything from let me help you move to let's go out on a date to I love you, right? Love, support, encouragement. The Seven of Coins taking a look at what you have invested in something, kind of taking stock, taking inventory. Okay, what have I put into this? What have I gotten back out to show for it? And do I need to make decisions or changes? Should I stay where I'm at? Can I grow it to a 10? Should I just harvest what I can and leave? So it's kind of taking a look at basically what you have invested in something and asking yourself about decisions. This is what's going into the thought process of this offer, whether it's something that's coming into you or you're cons considering extending an offer to somebody else. But the Seven of Coins does imply, Aquarius, that you already have something invested in this. Next, we have Strength. Strength is about just that, having the strength to face your fears, your doubts, your insecurities, uh, we sometimes say this is also about wrestling with your shadow self, which is the aspects of ourselves that we don't always like to look at or acknowledge um, to ourselves, let alone to other people. It can be taking a look at our responsibility, the part we've had to play in situations as well, kind of owning it all or what belongs to you. With the Knight of Wands, another knight here, this is the Knight of Fire passion, excitement, enthusiasm, very fast, very spontaneous, very impulsive, very assertive. Hmm. Interesting. Next we have the nine of wands. So tens represent cycle ending or a cycle coming full circle. So the nine of wands represents you're close to the end of a cycle. This is a difficult one. This is somebody who's been through quite a bit already, and here's yet another thing. He may or may not know that he's almost done. This is a card about feeling tired, discouraged, maybe feeling like giving up, wondering if she should give up. It's the, the Nine of Wands is kind of the card I, I often look at as the, the 11th hour, it's darkest before dawn. Often the message with the Nine of Wands is keep 
keep going keep pushing through you're almost there with the ace of wands so this is on the other side of that nine of wands ten of wands we have a new beginning here the ace of wands the number one of fire a new start an opportunity for a new path an exciting one of feels like Aquarius there's something in front of you you need to do in order to attain something or hold on to something or that you just need to let go of if you're not willing to do the thing you need to do or you're being called to do and kind of being stuck in that in-between place and it's kind of exhausting. From the bottom of the deck, the overall energy and focus for the first half of November is the Nine of Coins. Independence, self-sufficiency, self-empowerment, confidence, relying only on yourself. Hmm. let's clarify that overall energy of the nine of coins the ace of swords a new perspective the epiphany the light bulb going off over your head seeing something in the fresh real perspective that it actually is the five of wands winning at all costs ambitious a hard-won victory the five of pentacles I think I see what's going on here for at least some of you. Five of Pentacles is a card of not having enough. Financially, materially, or on an emotional level, feeling shut out, abandoned, betrayed, or, you know, this, this is kind of our beggar card. You know, this is somebody who feels like they have to beg for everything they need, everything they want. It feels like here... This feels like an emotional issue, possibly even a relationship issue. It feels like you're taking a look at a pattern that you have, Aquarius. And you're realizing what this pattern is actually costing. And this pattern, I think, involves your being, for some of you, it's being independent and I don't need anybody else for anything it's costing you I, I think I mean there isn't anything wrong with that you know nine of coins but like anything it can be taken too far where particularly in relationships or partnerships it can make the other person feel maybe not relevant it looks like somebody here has a habit of maybe coming and going and they've taken that as kind of a life ideology to the part that it's interfering with their life in some way and it's costing them something or it's going to cost something and you're trying to really look at it and consider, okay, in order to have this thing or keep this thing or acquire this thing, I have to take a look at my patterns and modify and adapt. But you're not sure if that's something you want to do. It's kind of like, do I want to hold on to this behavior pattern or this ideology more than I want to hold on to this, this person, place, situation? Kind of being stuck there. Interesting. It's, I'm getting that for somebody. Might not resonate for everybody. Clarify Knight of Cups. What's this emotionally driven opportunity here?
The Three of Pentacles, an opportunity to build something with someone. The Empress, lovely, abundance, giving birth to new things, fertility. In a relationship, it might be the other person, how you see them, how they see you. Clarify the Seven of Coins, taking inventory. The Two of Cups, soulmate, kindred spirits, best friends. The Seven of Pentacles, again, Seven of Coins, Seven of Pentacles is the same thing. There's strong consideration energy here, either in a partnership here too, whether it's romantic or just really close kindred spirit best friends without the romantic aspect. It can be either or here in a general reading. It feels like they are strongly or you are strongly considering There's an opportunity here to build something with this person. I mean, I don't know if the offer is coming into you or you're extending it or it's just been sitting on the table for quite some time. For those of you for whom this would resonate more as a relationship reading, this is, you know, this is some this is a partnership or a couple in which one person has this very strong ideology, their life ideology that Maybe they were let down quite a bit in life or they realized at some point they kind of said, well, you know, I'm the only one that can take care of me and I'm the only one I can rely on or trust. So that's just how I'm going to live my life. Um, coming here, coming there, leaving, going, leaving, going, leaving, going. And it feels like there's a relationship here um, that's maybe quite beautiful and maybe you're wanting to hang on to it. Maybe there's some issues here. Somebody is feeling not relevant in your life or you're not feeling relevant in their life because they have such a strong ideology of that nine of coins. I don't need anybody. Stay, come, it's okay, I'll be fine. Which has a way of making the person that you're in a relationship with or in a partnership with feel like they don't really matter all that much. So what point should, why should they stay, right? Again, I can't tell which side of this is on. Uh, you're on Aquarius, which probably means some of you are on one side, some of you are on the other. That's kind of what I'm getting. This is about kind of taking a look at your, uh, somebody. This is one person taking a look at their ideology and their behavior patterns, even though it's difficult and it feels like they want to cut and run, which maybe is part of their previous pattern. So they're thinking, okay, do I, do I want to believe again? Do I want to hope again? Kind of being stuck in that place. But the Nine of Wands implies that you're close to the end of it, which would likely mean that you make a decision either to, to adapt and adjust in order to accommodate this relationship or partnership, or you just kind of go off on your own and that's it. Clarify strength with the Knight of Wands. I mean, it could be a work partnership or some kind of partner project with a really great kindred spirit friend. But again, the f fundamental energy is the same. So strength is clarified by the lovers and the devil. <laughs> we got the lovers and the two of cups. Definitely a relationship central here. You know, this is like very close ties. It may or may not be healthy or there may be aspects of it that may or may not be healthy. But this is a really, really strong connection here and one that um, like neither of you really want to let go of. Clarify Knight of Wands. But this is also about having the strength to break an unhealthy cycle as well that is affecting the relationship in a negative way. Ace of Wands. Five of Cups, loss, grief, regret, the sun. This is like, again, it's like a, a relationship reading where one person has had this habit for a long time, probably long before they met this person of, okay, when things get too hard, you know, I'm, I've got this independence thing. and But taking it way too far in a way that makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to have a healthy, loving, stable relationship. Or when things get difficult, they 
or when they think they're getting too close or attached or connected, they have to leave. They come and go and come and go just to prove something to themselves, to the people around them. And they're realizing here what it's actually costing them and what it's actually, the effect it's actually having on the other person. And it's a difficult thing to do, kind of take a look in that mirror, right? Nine of Wands, Ace of Wands. The Hermit and the Seven of Wands. You may be tired of doing this. You may be tired of being alone. You may be tired of defending, you know, the lone cowboy or cowgirl kind of syndrome. Somebody else in the relationship may be tired of being alone so much of the time. Ace of Wands. The Four of Wands, one of the happy home cards, happy home, stability, marriage, the world, leveling up, going to the next level, moving into a whole new a whole new level within this partnership or relationship. But it can't happen until you let go of some kind of or the other person lets go of this this mindset this ideology they have which again probably stems from having had experiences in the past Aquarius that left one with no other choice but at that time to go you know I can only trust myself I can only rely on myself and so that's how I'm going to approach things and and that ideology taken to an extreme it can be really challenging to have close relationships because again the other person ends up feeling not uh, so important or not so relevant and here again it's about examining patterns and ideologies and trying to make a decision if you want to take a chance again so let's end with some advice and guidance for Aquarius It feels like Spirit is presenting you with an opportunity here to change something. Or the other person with an opportunity to change something in order to stabilize and secure this relationship or partnership. Or project, too. The star, renewed, restored hope, faith, and optimism. Operating in faith, doing everything that's in front of you to do, and trusting. Even if you can't see more than a step or two ahead of you, which can be quite scary. You know, you've got this devil card energy pulling at you going, Oh, you don't need to do this. Oh, just take off. You know, or oh, just do this thing. Five of wands in reverse. Let it go. Stop fighting about the same thing over and over and over again. Wanting to be right, wanting to be, it's, it's, let it go. The moon and justice. I feel here the moon is very similar to the high priestess, that spiritual pulling. I think that you know what the right thing is to do here, Aquarius. Whether it's to face these fears and challenges and work through them, or, or to leave and allow the other person or partner to have what they need or what they deserve. And that right thing can be either fighting through this or if you feel like you can't to free the other person so they can so that you guys can just kind of go off and be who you are individually. So the right thing may vary, but it feels like you know what you should do. Boy, this reading came out a, a little bit preachy. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to, but it's like one overwhelming story that I'm getting, so somebody must have heard it, and everybody else, well, you know, can't resonate for everybody. But those are your messages, Aquarius, for the uh, first half of November 2022. I hope you found them useful in some way, or at least gave you something to chew on. Again, for those of you for whom this may have hit home or resonated, and you'd like to take a deeper look, reach out for a personal reading for yourself or as a gift for someone else. Feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to hear from you and to work with you. You can also get that contact info by clicking the description link with this video. I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the November mid-month readings. Until then, stay well, stay safe. I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.